Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to NTD Racing. Behind me is Lefty, one of the two trucks that we did a re-gear on the 14 bolt axle, took it to the Baja 1000. Both of them did amazing. This one in particular made it all 1,200 miles of the race. So this will be a quick, about 13 minute video showing you everything I know about doing a re-gear and putting a spool on a 14 bolt axle. We got some merch, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get to it. Okay, the 14 bolt axle has been amazing in our race truck honcho. Now we're gonna put it in our new truck over here, Lefty, that's getting built. So uh, we're trusting you right now. That'll be one video. This video is gonna be the ring gear. Let me show you all the parts that we're gonna use. This is everything that we're gonna use that should be in your toolbox besides the things that I forget to talk about. We are gonna do the uh, crush sleeve eliminator in there. Obviously some RTV to make gaskets. You need a one and a half inch socket to do this job to take that pin bolt off and you also need some way to make this one and a half inch socket go onto a small torque wrench so you can measure the preload on the, the pinion gear we got one of these little gauges here that tells you how much lash you got this is a kit you can find it in the description below how to get it off of Amazon or eBay or something like that the Vivor Here's a tool that we had to make to make the honcho re-gear work. We got the 538 gears and then we're also putting it on a spool, but it should be the same no matter what kind of uh, you know axle you have, whether it's open or you have some kind of a locker. Then, So here are some of the steps we're gonna be going through. And I kind of try to break these down to make it as simple as I possibly could. I find that there are basically four steps you're gonna go through and there's two different colors. Why is that? Well, you first thing you're gonna do is the pinion bearing preload that's in green because once that do that's done you're done with the pinion bearing uh, and then you go on to the ring gear and as you're doing those the ring gear bearing preload and then the lash and then the pinion depth and all that if if you make an error or if you find that something doesn't work there and you got to readjust it you got to kind of go all the way back up to the beginning and do it all over again and keep doing that process until you have that correct there's also all the values that i use for this uh, and then some torque specs that work for me. All right, here's a quick look at what the inside of the 14 bolt looks like. Right underneath these retainers right here, these uh, caps are the bearings for the whole carrier. You look inside here, these things with the little holes in them, that's what actually puts preload. Those things screw in and out to put preload on those bearings and adjust the ring gear left and right in relation to the pinion behind uh, there. Um, the way you can think about this all the time is imagine this over here is a driver's side and it's righty tighty to tighten to make those things go that way. So whether it's this one, you turn it to the right, it's moving that way. You turn this one to the right, it's moving that way. So before we remove the bearing caps, we are going to mark those to make sure that we remember the orientation and then also which side they go on. Okay, here's a look at the carrier and here is the pinion. We're gonna go ahead and get to work on this here in a second and then we'll do this one next. And in this thing, we're gonna take the bearings off. We're gonna reuse those. But besides the bearings, everything else is gonna be gone because we're gonna be using this spool and put it on with this uh, ring gear. So we will reuse the bearings on this, reuse the bearings. We might even reuse the seals on this. My goal in life is to have uh, JR, the driveway engineer, say, dude, you'll reuse anything. And I will, as long as it works, I'll keep reusing it. All right, the pinion nut is an inch and a half and a strong impact driver will do it. A vice isn't required, but a good friend with a wrench is required. So let's hit it. Okay, to remove the bearings from the pinion, we actually made this thing out of quarter inch plate to help us out and it sure helps out a lot. It is a five inch hole, a nine inch by nine inch plate. We put some bends on it and basically you'll see how this thing works. The pinion is gonna drop down inside there and it's gonna give it a place to sit. We're gonna put it on these boards Wow, these two by fours in the our press brake and that is just because it didn't fit this is a 20 ton press brake from harbor freight after that our bearing puller had this big nut which we're going to go ahead and use that to push straight down on the bolt for the pinion and push that bit pinion right out the bottom Did they have somebody holding it? Let me 
Sorry. All right, with the bearing off, we're gonna take the bearing, we cleaned it up a little bit, our new pinion, slide it on, put it into the press. We're using that same bearing puller tool to press that bearing on now. It's a perfect size for this whole job. Okay, this whole mystery of the crushed sleeve eliminator. This here is the crushed sleeve that was in the original pinion. We're taking it out and we're measuring it. And what it comes out to is about a 0 0.830 inches. Uh, they give you a whole bunch of shims with this new uh, crush sleeve eliminator. And the thing about this is it's not going to crush. It's 0 .7, uh, about 0 0.74 inches. And you need to have a combination of shims to take that to the 0 0.83. I really don't care what size the shims are. I just started stacking them on there and swapping them around until the whole combination came out to 0.83 perfect and later on if it's too tight we'll start adding some shims in and if it's too loose we'll take shims out to change that preload okay so here is attempt number one of getting the whole preload just right here's the pinion that bearing we just had here is the housing we're using the same seal it looks pretty good jr so don't say anything about that anyway we're using the same seal we just dropped this thing over top of this we never even pulled the bearing out of there. And uh, now we take that same tool that is for the bearing puller. It fits perfectly right inside there. We line this thing up and then we just drive it all the way in. And we just press it until this thing won't push anymore because it won't crush that uh, crushed sleeve eliminator tool. It might take a little bit of tapping down to get that yoke on enough to get some purchase with the, uh, the nut. And then we're gonna drive the nut all the way on there. We got our big DeWalt impact wrench we're just going to drive it on until it stops going uh, and that should be about 300 foot pounds of torque or some massive number or something like that and basically it's just going to go ahead and crush all the way to that crush um, sleeve eliminator and it's going to load the the bearings up as much as it possibly can with that eliminator in there if you don't do that then you might the the preload of the bearings may have backed off a little bit so to get an accurate reading with your wrench you have to actually put the yoke on and drive the nut all the way on and then if it isn't right we're going to take it all the way back apart now what we're going to do spin the pinion over this one is pretty tight. We're getting about 20 inch pounds of torque. We're using used bearings. It says it go be between five and 15. So we're gonna take this whole thing apart. We are gonna actually add in a couple mils of shim and then do the whole thing over again and see what we get. All right, that only took a few iterations to make that happen. But basically now what we're doing is once you get this thing spinning, then you want it to continuously spin and then read the dial of the torque wrench. And we're looking for between five and 15 inch pounds and we see 10, perfect. We're ready to go onto this carrier and try to get these bearings off. Okay, so we are going to, again, use some of the parts off this carrier. We're gonna reuse the bearings and we're also gonna reuse the bolts. We, they're not torqued to yield, so we're gonna reuse those. So anyway, to get this bearing off, we're gonna use this bearing puller thing that we used before. And this is how this one's used. First, we start with this pusher or whatever this thing's called, a little slug there. We're gonna run the race uh, over the existing bearing. We flip the, this little uh, nut down over so that the flat side is down and we're gonna run that thing, put it down and then run it all the way up against the race down here. Then we're gonna take the clamshell. We got the right size here. One at a time. We're gonna do one at a time. You're gonna put it over and then you're gonna run this nut up until it's up against the clamshell, taking up that space. Put the other one on. We're gonna drop the sleeve over, tighten up this little nut right here. And then once we start pounding on that, the bearing is actually gonna push against the bearing and the races to pull this whole thing off. So here we go. Ready? Went a lot faster. <laughs> All right, there's the bearing. Just as good as new, ready to go on the next one. Here's two. mark in there now it's heated up just drops right in place and you gotta slide it around before 
All right, as we go to torque this thing down, these are 5 8 inch bolts. The end torque is going to be 120 foot pounds. What we'll do is we're going to go one pass, alternating sides at just like just getting them snug, and then 60 foot pounds, and then we'll just hit them with 120 foot pounds. And to keep this thing from spinning, we, we put some old King Shock uh, sh shafts through there, and then hopefully they'll resist the, the spinning. Through. All right, it is time to use the bearing race driver set. If you want one of these, you'll find the link for it in the description below and the 20 ton press from Harbor Freight to drive these bearings back onto the carrier. Okay, so we're gonna drop the pinion in with the old spacer. Now lining the pinion up, you see there's this little oil galley right here. That lines up with this oil galley inside there. There's also a flat side on the side of this pinion. That goes on the passenger side as you drop that thing in there. A couple taps and it'll seat itself right in there. All right, the bolts that are going in here are 9 16 and they take 65 foot-pounds of torque. To prep the case to drop the ring gear in, we need to take these uh, pre-tensioners or the preload nuts and just basically twist them righty tighty to get them all the way out of the way over here this one also goes righty tighty and it, that'll take it in that direction now we're ready to drop the ring gear in close and then just drop it into place with the ring gear in there and now the caps are just bolted down just tight enough to hold everything in but we're still going to be able to move the bearings back and forth in there at least the other uh, races we're going to start on this left side we're going to start moving that bearing preload bolt down until we see no more lash in the ring so basically you just keep wiggling it when the sound goes away that backlash is gone once the backlash is gone we're going to back off that that preload bolt two notches Two notches over there then we'll come over here to the right side and now we're going to take out all the play in the bearings by bringing this one basically up to put pressure on that bearing and once it takes all the play out now we're going to go two more notches because we're using used bearings all right now it's time to check the backlash with the dog gauge So we got our dial gauge hooked up here. It's kind of magneted over here. There's probably tons of different ways, but the big thing as you set this up, you want it mostly tangential to the direction of the teeth at the very tip of the teeth also set up. We got this thing on zero. And as we move our ring gear, eight, that's awesome. So that brings us right into the zone that we were looking for between three mils and 12 mils and ideally the best would be between five and eight so we nailed it okay with that done we're now ready to tighten down these bearing caps it's a 13 16 socket and we're tightening it down to 135 foot pounds of torque all right so we're using some of this ac delco gear marking compound we're going to take three teeth we're going to paint the entire things both sides so that when the pinion gear runs in there we can see what it wipes off so now what we want to do is basically run the pinion across the ring gear. We're going to use a drill as opposed to some kind of an impact wrench just so I get a consistent spin. He's going to put resistance on the ring gear so we get a good marking on the uh, pattern on that ring gear. Ready? Yep. Ready to reverse? Yeah, that was four times. Ready? Other way? So he's putting a little bit of resistance on there. We're going to let it run through a couple times and let's check out what the gear pattern looks like. Once you're done, you go into the Yukon kit instruction manual. It's going to talk about coast sides and drive sides. You're going to compare what you see on your gears to what you see in here. And if it's good, you're good. Button it up and you're done. If it is not good, if for some reason you see something you're not supposed to see on there, so let's say, for example, you see pinion too far away, you got to go back in here and follow the instructions and either take shims out of or put shims into the pinion gear. Come back over here, redo, like loosen up these bearing caps, redo the backlash, check that with the dial gauge again, and then paint these gears and spin them over one more time and keep doing that until you get a gear pad that looks just right with the correct amount of backlash.
All right, so you saw us go through the process one more time. We took the pinion out. We actually ended up taking out the shim. The shim that was in there was seven or six mils. It was a small shim that we had in our whole shim pack. We took it out and then we went back in. We checked the lash. It went from a 10 mils down to five mils, which is even more perfecter and uh, in our case. And then we checked the pattern again. It's as good as it's gonna get. I think it looks pretty good. All right, so now that the ring gear and the pinion are dialed in, we just got the button up stuff left to do. We're getting the surfaces all clean. We're gonna put a gasket on for the our new diff cover. That's gonna be 35 foot pounds of torque for those bolts and their half inch sockets. We also need to get our axles back in. Uh, so we're gonna clean these up. We're gonna use RTV on these and that's gonna be a 19 millimeter and it's gonna be 115 foot pounds of torque to put those things back in. Once we get this thing all buttoned up, it's gonna be ready to go into the new truck. Can't wait to see it drive. I hope you found some value in this video and you, we've earned your clicking the subscribe button if you're looking for more information. Some of my favorite videos, which I got a lot of the information from, are in the description below and you can check those out for more in-depth information on how to re-gear the 14 bolt. And one last thing, I would like to thank all of those who participated in my previous video. We were raising money for a very deserving family during the Christmas holidays, they had lost their mother. And uh, they were asking for about $3,000. I think we nearly tripled that. That's amazing. I'm totally humbled to be part of this community. So thank all those of you who uh, you know, gave up some bucks for those folks. Uh, anyway, got a lot more of these videos to, uh, to come. We're getting ready for the Mint 400. Hope you will choose to join us in those videos and we'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.